We have a Bears trade alert. It is NFL trade deadline, and I am Harrison Graham. Welcome into Chicago Bears. Now uh, we're going to react to Khalil Herbert getting traded to the Cincinnati Bengals, plus a big inner division trade as the Lions make a big move. Going to react to that as well. Be sure to subscribe and join us. We will be live probably around 12 Central Time uh, with all of this year's NFL trade deadline coverage. We'll take you all the way through the deadline, which is at 3 o'clock Central. Whether this is the only move the Bears make or not, uh, we are going to cover it all. So be sure to subscribe. Join us, myself, producer Colin, will be rocking and rolling. And if this is your first time on this channel. We bring you daily free Bears content. So all I got to do is subscribe today. Okay, Khalil Herbert gets shipped out. He is a Cincinnati Bengal. Bears get a 2025 seventh round pick. So not much, obviously. Better than a pick swap, but uh, not exactly a, a big return. Kind of what you figured, right? Either a late round pick like this or a late pick swap. Um, he was out of the rotation. He was essentially the fourth running back on the team. Uh, the last couple of weeks, that proved to be the case as he was a healthy scratch. DeAndre Swift has been the starter. Roshan Johnson's the number two with his ability to play on third down, catch the football, short yardage, et cetera. Uh, Travis Homer is your special teams guy who can play in a pinch. Uh, and then Khalil Herbert was kind of the odd man out. And, you know, it was kind of unfortunate. I, li I like Herbert. I think he's arguably the best runner on this team, at least the second best behind Swift. He just doesn't do the utility things that well, but that doesn't mean he's not a good player. That doesn't mean he's not valuable. That doesn't mean he didn't do some really good things here. Maybe Shane Waldron didn't like him for whatever reason. And you know that <laughs> if that's the case, that rubs me the wrong way because Herbert uh, was a good contributor for this team. But it, in fairness to the bears, he just never really improved that much at the other things. Like we know he can run the football. Can he do the other stuff? He doesn't do a ton on special teams. He can be a kickoff returner, but he's not a dynamic one. He doesn't catch the ball that well. He has below average hands. He does not pick up blitzes at all. Uh, that That's always been a weakness of his. I thought he got slightly better last year compared to the first couple of years of his career, but still well below average. So it's one of those things. You spend money on DeAndre Swift. You draft Roshan Johnson, who's got three years left on his rookie deal. Herbert's got one. He's kind of the odd man out, and it's why I, you know, I, I wondered if they would try to trade him during training camp. Now, maybe there wasn't an offer on the table, uh, or maybe they thought he'd have a bigger role. Uh, who knows? But it became clear the last couple of weeks when he was inactive, they were going to try to ship him out. And he tweeted out, thank God. Um, I, I don't think it's like F the Bears. I think it's more of, I just haven't been playing this year, and I want to play again. And clearly Cincinnati thinks he can. Uh, I think that's a decent pairing with Chase Brown. Uh, in that uh, in that RB room. So good for Herbert. He has a chance to play a little bit before hitting free agency and potentially earning a contract somewhere. And listen, when they drafted him, I loved the pick. I, I thought he was a good player at Virginia Tech. And look, he ran for over 1,700 yards here, primarily in three seasons. Like he's an excellent rotational NFL running back. It's just when you're not a starter and you don't do the – what do you just the utility stuff the grunt work like if you don't want to specialize in something uh, other than just being a good runner it, it, it's hard because we saw it last year Deontay Foreman's a good example of this when he's your starter he can hold down the fort pretty well good early down runner but he doesn't catch the ball and he doesn't pick up blitzes so if he's your number two or hell your number three it's hard to have that guy active because he's not going to play on special teams much. He's not going to catch the ball and be a third down weapon. He's not going to be a pass protection guy. So it, it just limits your role uh, as a player, unfortunately. And I think it just got to the, that point in Chicago where good player, really good runner, but final year of his contract, they want to see what Roshan can do. They paid uh, DeAndre Swift. And, and at the end of the day, uh, it just, you know, he got kind of squeezed out. He got kind of squeezed out. And it's unfortunate, but, um, you know, at least the Bears got something here. Obviously not much, but uh, you kind of wonder if that's going to be all that they do. We'll explore some other potential trades for the Bears in a second, and then I want to hit 
on this Lions trade as well. But first, I do want to talk about uh, our sponsor today. That is Game Time. Check out Game Time right now. Last-minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. If you're looking to go to Bears versus Patriots this weekend, tickets probably dropping a little bit with the Bears uh, losing a couple of games here. Go check that out. Uh, Game Time's the place to go to get tickets to go watch your favorite sporting teams, football, basketball, hockey, uh, in college football, um, if you want to go see your favorite bands perform, comedians uh, put up a comic show, whatever the case may be. If you need tickets, Game Time is the place to go. Their newest feature, Game Time Picks, makes getting tickets to go see your favorite teams and performers much easier. You don't have to scroll for minutes and sometimes hours through thousands of tickets trying to figure out what's best for you. It'll kind of pinpoint spots uh, on the visual venue, whether it's a stadium or uh, arena whatever uh just price points of like okay second level this is kind of the range of uh, money you're going to be spending on a ticket first level this is the cost and based on your budget you'll be able to have a much better idea of uh, what you can and cannot afford so be sure to toggle that feature on download game time today use code chat sports for 20 dollars off your first purchase only once you create an account that's code chat sports all one word uh for 20 dollars off and uh terms do apply there what time is it it's game time all right so khalil herbert has been traded before we get to this lines trade i do want to kind of just explore what else could happen for the bears today um you know, could they buy low, like on a Brandon Scherf, uh, the Jags offensive lineman, you know, losing two games in a row. I, 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 I'm not really in the camp of swinging big unless you just find a great deal for a young controllable asset uh, at four and four. There's coaching chaos. I mean, this thing could look a lot different in, in two and a half months from who's in charge. So not sure how aggressive polls will get in that regard, but a Brandon Scherf type. Uh, you know, maybe an offensive tackle potentially if there's a, a swing guy available. I mean, Amagaji, Braxton Jones, Darnell Wright are all injured right now. Um, you're you're kind of scrambling there. There's a scenario where you may have to kick Matt Pryor out to right tackle, Borm at left tackle, and then Ryan Bates, who hopefully can come back this week, plays guard. So uh, you're getting pretty thin up front. Does that prevent you from trading Nate Davis now? I think that's a fair question to ask. Dominique Robinson was a name that was floated out there. He played for the first time last week where the Bears trying to get some tape on him out to other teams. That's a possibility, but it, it feels like it's going to be a, a pretty quiet deadline for Chicago. It's very possible this is the only move that takes place. So um, we'll see. I don't expect major moves like we've seen the last deadline. There's not. I don't think there's a Montez Sweat deal out there. I don't think there's a Chase Claypool deal out there. I don't think they're going to trade away a player of the caliber of a Roquan Smith. So uh, I think this is where you're at. The one wild card I'd say is Keenan Allen. It, do you consider trading him? If you get an okay offer, like a fifth or a sixth round pick, uh, he's been okay for the bears. Certainly not great. I, I mentioned yesterday, I don't think the bears have used him properly this year. They're trying to make him like a vertical one-on-one -on -one guy when he's a short area quickness guy. It's just, it's weird personnel usage, but that's a different issue, but it does make me wonder, like, do you just try to trade him? Uh, to a team, a contender that could use him properly. So maybe that's a possibility. But all in all, uh, I do expect things to be at least mostly quiet between now uh, and the 3 o'clock Central deadline. Okay, do want to talk a little uh, NFC North. Uh, Zedaria Smith to Detroit. Feels like this was just a matter of time before it was going to happen. Now, maybe Detroit was holding out hope that – a Max Crosby or a Miles Garrett would spring loose and become available. Um, I saw a report that Detroit reached out on Crosby and that was a non-starter. So I do think this is a couple of things. One, Detroit needed a pass rusher. They get Smith. They trade uh, a, a fifth next year and a sixth the next year for Smith and a seventh. So really not that much, to be honest. Um, and two, I do think from an NFL trade deadline standpoint as a whole, this is kind of confirmation. I don't think you're seeing the big headliner blockbuster deals today. I, I don't think Crosby's going anywhere. I don't think Garrett's going anywhere. I don't think Dallas is going to trade Mark, Micah Parsons. I think you're going to see B and C level trades like Khalil Herbert, Sidaria Smith, um, you know, players of that caliber, like, Maybe a Cooper Cup, but probably not because uh, the Rams have won three in a row. Like the Mike Williams of the world could get traded. So that's probably what you're looking at here. Uh, teams looking to buy low. It certainly feels like a buyer's market. This is not much for Zedaria Smith. And Detroit's loading up, man. They um, they they feel like the team to beat in the NFC. 
it, you know, if you ask me right now, it feels like a Chiefs Lions crash course. Like that 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 was my prediction before the series uh, season on four verts, my NFL and college football channel. Go subscribe if you haven't. Um, and that's where I'd sit right now. It feels like that's uh, that's a very very realistic scenario. So Detroit adds a pass rusher. He's got five and a half sacks this year. Uh, certainly not a full Aiden Hutchinson replacement, but he will help. And um, it's bad news for the rest of the NFC North and the rest of the NFC because uh, if Detroit keeps playing like they are offensively, they just got to be decent on defense uh, to uh, to be awesome uh, this year. All right, that's going to do it. There you go. A little uh, trade update this morning. More to come. Our live show in a few hours. So join Colin and I. Turn on those notifications so you know exactly when we go live. My name is Harrison Graham. We will see you guys soon. You're on Bears Now. 